Hi everyone, John again, and I'm coming to you today, well, obviously from outside. I'm in lovely uh, Praia de Guayuba in Guarujá here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. A, a bit of a mouthful, I guess, for, uh, for gringos. I hope that the noise isn't too bad. Also, I hope I'm not uh, too dark here, too obscure, because I'm sitting under a lovely shade tree here. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Uh, it looks kind of like a magnolia, but I'm not sure exactly what kind of tree this is here. Anyway, uh, today I'd like to talk to you about defining a niche. Now, I'm from the southern U.S. I say niche. You may well say niche. Doesn't matter. Don't write to me. I don't care. Uh, but what's that's not important. What is important is that you have a niche uh, starting out as you teach. Um, now, a niche obviously is just a market segment. Now, what does that mean when you talk about teaching English and specifically teaching English online? Well, there teaching English, even teaching English online, it can be so many uh, different things. So when you're defining your niche, you, you need to, flying leaf, uh, you need to think about things such as uh, the age of the student that you want to teach, uh, their level coming into your classes, what's their native language perhaps. I mean, if you're Hispanic, you might want to focus on uh, people from Spanish-speaking countries, for example. Uh, there are also specialties that you can get into, um, such as uh, uh, TOEFL preparation. Uh, the TOEFL is an exam that uh, foreign students would take to study university in an English-speaking country. So uh, those are, uh, that's what I mean by niche in the, the context of uh, teaching English online. Now, how do you define your niche? Well, for some of you, that's going to be pretty easy. I think especially if you already have a lot of work experience, uh, experience in a particular area, uh, you may already come in with a pretty good idea of what it is that you want to teach. I, I started uh, teaching years ago business English because I had a good diverse business background with you know, manufacturing, banking, uh, IT, consulting, and it just seemed logical. I got an MBA, so it was just logical for, for me. Now, for you, uh, it may be obvious or it may not be, particularly if you're a little younger and you've got less experience. So let's talk for a couple minutes here about how you define a niche. And I think it might help you to kind of think about three circles. And what you want to try and do is kind of find where those circles overlap. Think about a Venn diagram, right? Okay, so the first is demand. Where out there is a demand for English? Uh, and you want to think about one where preferably where the people can pay a pretty decent amount of money. I mean, if you want to make 18 or $20 uh, an hour, you need to kind of give also some thought to um, who can pay that, right? But around the world, there are, um, there are many uh, areas of business specializations where people really, really need English. Uh, there's general business, of course, but any of the healthcare-related fields, IT, hospitality, which would include like hotels, restaurants, bars, um, um, you know, uh, that's just a few that I can think of off the top of my head. Where the aviation, where, where the people really need uh, English, you know, it may even be a requirement for their, for their job. So uh, think about that. Also think about where they could pay. The aviation is, is a good example, you know, pilots, uh, flight attendants, mechanics need uh, English um, as to, to become certified and uh, in their fields and so that's a, a good area and they typically make pretty good pretty good salaries okay so that's one circle and the second circle would be your experience coming in and that's your work experience and your educational experience so obviously you're going to start from your resume your cv you're going to look at your career work experience you're going to look at your formal education now i'd encourage you to think beyond that right think beyond that to like what other certifications do you have so let's say you're an attorney you were always a practicing attorney but you know you've got your private pilot's license well you know go back to what i said a minute ago that might be a good niche for you you know you could uh you always you love flying anyway right so you might decide that you want to teach pilots uh international english okay so that's uh that's one example and um there, there, there are others. You know, just think about what other skills that you have. I don't know. Maybe you're uh, scuba certified, as I am. Uh, there might be that might be a niche that you could develop. Okay, uh, teaching um, uh, scuba uh, instructors and dive masters in other countries the English that they they would need to work with with tourists. Um, so kind of think outside the the box there. 
And when it comes to work experience, you know, think not only about what your actual career experience has been, but what side jobs did you have? What jobs did you do in, in university? What uh, part-time jobs have you had? So kind of lengthen that, that list. Okay, now the other uh, circle is uh, what do you want to do? What would you like to do? Now this includes things like uh, what, what, what kind of student would you like to work with? What age of student? Would you like working with kids? Um, would you not? You know, uh, uh, and, and so on. It also kind of gets into the area of specializations. Is there a specialization that you think you, you have or that you could easily develop that you uh, would like to get into? Uh, again, the TOEFL prep is, is a very good example. It can be very lucrative. Uh, you have to make some investment in materials, but the people who take the TOEFL exam have a lot at stake. You know, they're trying to get into universities abroad. This is important in their life. So that's an example of where you could uh, think toward, well, that's a specialization that I could be good at. Uh, I studied English in school. I'm good at writing essays, that kind of stuff, whatever. Anyway, think about that. Now, ideally, you can come up with a niche that kind of meets at the intersection of uh, the demand, your skill sets, and your interest and desires, right? Uh, that would be the sweet spot if you, if you can identify that. And it may take you a little bit of time. Again, it may be quite easy. It, it may take a little bit of uh, thinking. I encourage you to, to, to get creative, you know? Um, uh, think outside of the box. Don't limit yourself too much. I mean, you, look, you... <laughs> You, you've crossed the first hurdle. You've jumped the first hurdle in that, you know, you're either a native speaker or a near native, right? I assume if you're watching this video. So you speak English well, you have English. That's the big hurdle. You've, you've crossed the big hurdle. So beyond that, don't limit yourself too much. Try to get creative. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Okay, let's say that you worked in HR. Uh, you've got good experience in that. Well, what if you tutored students in uh, creating a good resume, cover letters, and interviewing in English. Wow, that could be a great niche. It's one actually I've thought about developing. I've thought about doing some immersion courses in that. You know, I just haven't, don't have the time uh, yet to develop it, but you could really uh, make good money, I think, with that because the students have so much at stake, you know, they would uh, definitely pay good, good money for that. So that's an example. Uh, going back, um, we were talking about hospitality as a niche where uh, people really need English, but maybe they can't afford to pay what you want, right? Uh, maybe you, you really want to make 20 bucks an hour and, you know, a waiter in Italy wants English because he deals with international tourists and he wants to get better tips and so forth, but he can't afford to pay that. Well, what if you created a course and it could be a defined, you know, like two month or three month course. Uh, with this vocabulary, also some cultural tips and so on in there, and uh, you set it up as a small group course, uh, four students, six students, something like that, where each one gets a lot of chance to talk, where uh, you can give each one good attention, you can handle it on uh, Skype or another simple platform, you don't need a big expensive platform, uh, see section two of the course for some more information about platforms. Um, and. Uh, you could then have a, uh, a nice little niche, okay, that maybe other people haven't mined yet, and really help some people out and make good money doing it yourself. So try to get, get creative. Uh, final thoughts, you know, if, if you're really stuck and you still don't know what you want your niche to be, I'll, I'll give you a couple of suggestions. One, if you have some business experience, I would say teach business experience. And it really doesn't even matter too much what your excuse me, what industry your experience is in. Business English is in high demand around the world, so I'd say think about business English. Uh, if that doesn't appeal to you or you don't have a background in it, uh, why don't you just start teaching with the school, okay? Uh, the school will largely define your niche for you, okay? They're gonna bring students, uh, they're gonna find the students, bring the students to you. Um, now, you may or may not like those students, but you're going to learn, right, what it is, what kind of teaching you like and what kind of teaching you don't. So if uh, you try working for a school uh, and they bring you kids, you, you may say, wow, I really like working with kids. That should be my niche. Or you may discover, I, you know, I really don't like working with, with kids. I prefer to work with adults. Well, 
you know, you've learned a little bit, right? You've narrowed uh, down what your niche could be for the future, okay? So uh, if you're still really just not sure, uh, uh, try working for, for a school and kind of let them help you to decide what your niche should be. And the final note is, uh, I may have already mentioned in the, in the video here, my niche has evolved over time, and that may happen to you too. So don't be too concerned that, you know, when you uh, start in, uh, that you uh, can never change your niche. You certainly can, of course. You know, when I started, I was teaching uh, business English um, to, you know, diverse people, some, um, you know, accountants, some attorneys, you know, and, and uh so forth but it sort of morphed over time now I'm teaching almost exclusively medical doctors surgeons medical students and it, it just I got one and she referred others and they referred others and so by word of mouth that's uh, the group that I'm teaching today that's that's my niche but uh, so your niche can evolve over time and you know you may start with uh, uh, teaching uh, helping one student prepare for the TOEFL and say you know yeah I'm pretty good at this and I've got the materials already let me push that and let me make that my niche so things will evolve over time and I don't want you to think that you can never change your your niche um, that said that doesn't relieve you of the responsibility for defining some niche as you start out I, I think you'd really be doing yourself a, a disservice and really your students a disservice if you have no niche going in. I mean, just imagine yourself trying to teach, uh, you know, uh, kids in China, a, uh, a university student in Thailand, a uh, businesswoman in Paris, and a, uh, a doctor in Colombia. You know, uh, how could you possibly do that and do a good job? You know, you've got different ages of student, different uh, probably levels uh, of ability. You'd need different materials. Their particular grammar and pronunciation problems are going to be different because they speak different native languages. Uh, so you'll do a much better job all the way around uh, in marketing yourself, selecting materials, lesson prep, delivering lessons, having satisfied students if you define a niche. Okay, So uh, I think that's enough for today. Um, uh, anyway, best of luck to you.